right, welcome back. Tom Christie back in the carving shop, and this will be session seven of creating a green wing teal drake decoy. In session six, we finished the body, got it sanded, and it's ready to go. And in session seven, I'm going to focus a little bit of time on finishing the head. There are a couple of minor details that I want to go through with you before we attach the head. So we'll get that done and the seam taken care of. And hopefully we'll get to sealing the decoy today. We may get to flotation, although I've said I don't want these videos to get too long where people lose interest. Uh, so we'll see if we get that far today. If you haven't hit subscribe, please do that. That helps me. My goal is to build this channel. And I've been so encouraged that uh, I chose YouTube because it's an international platform. I'm hearing from people in the country of Turkey. Uh, yesterday I got a message from a person in Ireland. The UK is well represented along with Canada and of course the US, New Zealand. So that is really encouraging to me because my goal is to have this repository of how-to videos on decoy carving out there, carving and painting, for people to tap into in the future and uh, and today and hopefully get some people started that have never heard of decoy carving but might want to pick it up and give it a try uh, and also encourage people that have been carving and just want to improve their skills just to share some techniques that I use and uh, hopefully you can pick up a few tips along the way that will help you improve your own carving Anyway, that's enough talking for today. Let's get to carving. Okay, we use this two-part epoxy sculpt to set the eyes. And today, I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper. You can use painter's tape to cover up the eye. You've got to prevent scratches because sandpaper will easily scratch an eye. What I do is put my thumb over the eye and that helps me stay away from the eye as I'm sanding. But you can see um, with this epoxy sculpt, there's not much sanding I need to do to smooth things out. The other thing I do is use a, an X-Acto knife and you can carve this uh, epoxy and shape up the eye get it exactly the way you want it and the goal is we don't want to leave any shelf here that's going to pick up a shadow uh, when we seal paint the decoy we want it to look real natural so i will work on that and not bore you with a lot of sanding again but we'll get both eyes ready to go and then looking at my reference again, I do want to narrow the back here. This crest gets pretty pointed in the back. And there's a little bit of a black uh, part of the rear of the crest of green wing teal drake. And I want to do a little bit of definition on that. So we'll do that next. I'm going to use this teardrop shape burr and I've kind of penciled in the cheek line and I'm just going to use that burr to go along the cheek line and then narrow the back of the crest as it approaches the rear of the head in back there. So I'm just carefully removing wood making that a little bit more of a concaved area instead of a solid line to the back of the head. being careful not to remove too much, but then I'm blending that into the head as you go up on the head. And I'll speed through this so you can take a look. Okay, just a view from the top here so you can see how that's kind of concaved a little bit. Now I'll use my sanding drum to finish removing wood and bringing that to more of a point at the rear of the crest there. 
So it's going to be laying on the back. So it's going to be spread out a little bit, but come to a nice point in back. And then I want to blend the cheek so there's no hard line there. And it looks natural. Now I'm just going to do a little hand sanding to smooth everything out and finish the, the crest. I think that's as much as I want to take off. But you can see there's a little bit of a different shape to the crest now. Okay, I've got that shaped up the way I want it. The back of the crest there. I'm just going to retrace around that modified profile. We have a little bit of sanding to do to take care of these uh, wood putty repairs of the nail holes. So while I'm doing that, I'm just going to sand that area off so we don't have any kind of a little shelf here in back. Just taking out some of the remaining bandsaw lines there so that they're not showing in the finished carving. All right. Before we attach the head though, I did check my reference one more time and I want to put a little bit of a separation between the shoulder as it goes down uh, by the breast and the breast itself. In that tucked head position, you often see a little bit of a, a separation line there between the breast and as it moves around to the side pocket. So I'm gonna carve that in right now and I'm using this teardrop shape um, burr to do the rough carving and then I'll shift to the sanding drum and just smooth everything out take a little bit more wood off as I'm doing that and it just puts a little bit more character in that breast area as it approaches the front of the bird the details they do count and this might be a little hard to see, but hopefully you can see that little bit of a shadow that gets cast there in that area. And I think it's going to look better with that tucked head. Let's put the head on and take a look. I'll try to get some light on here. I'll continue to smooth that area out, but it's subtle, but it's there. All right, a last minute adjustment there, but I feel better. So I'm mixing up the five minute DevCon epoxy. You may want to use a different adhesive, but this is what I use because it's quick and strong and I've never had a problem with it. I'm just gonna spread that evenly on the bottom of the head. Try to pick up all gaps so that there's everything is wet with the glue. Same here. I like to wet both surfaces just to make sure I've picked up any gaps in the wood and that there's enough adhesive to get a good strong bond. Put the head in place and kind of rock it back and forth to press the glue out. Wipe off any excess 
glue as much as possible, not too much on this bird. So I'll maintain some pressure on this as that dries for five minutes, and then we'll come back and do some work on the neck joint to fill that in. All right, now that the glue is set, I'm gonna use acetone and just wet this neck joint area just to make sure there's no loose uh, sawdust and to also help with the bonding. And then you can use some sort of, I'm just using a paintbrush handle to push some plastic wood into that neck joint, kind of work it into the neck joint. And then I'm going to go back with the acetone on an old paintbrush and just smooth things out, remove the excess material. One of the nice things about a tucked head position is there's not much of a neck joint to fill, so it's not too difficult to, to get a nice joint going. Do that on the opposite side as well. People make fun of me for the tools that I use sometimes, like this beautiful <laughs> custom tool. But you know, if it works, I'm all about it. So I don't get too hung up on having a special tool if I can improvise. My dad always told me, mechanics wise, improvise, Tom. All right, I'm gonna finish that up and then uh, we'll let that dry before we move on. Just give you a quick view of that. Make sure you get some plastic wood up under the neck joint as well. While things are drying, I'm gonna use my belt sander to smooth off the bottom of the decoy. Just kind of rock the decoy back and forth and uh, take Tupelo off until you get a nice smooth surface on the bottom like that. Now that I have the bottom smooth, I like to put a brand on my decoys. And people have asked me where I got my brand. I actually bought it from Woodcraft Supply in Parkersburg, West Virginia. But it's been about 35 years ago, so I don't know if they still make brands or not. I gave them my design, and they were able to produce a brand for me. Hopefully you can see this. It's just a permanent maker's mark. And now we can strike our line around here uh, to get ready for flotation. This is a little jig I made myself uh, to strike the water line around the decoy. I did a separate little video on the making of that. If you're interested in it, you can check that out. But it's adjustable for different uh, water levels, and I've got it adjusted for the water level that I put on my pattern. And now I'm going to use that. And I'm not pressing very hard because I don't want to dent and put a, a line in this soft tupelo. But I'm going to put a light line entirely around the decoy. So I know when I float this bad boy exactly where I want him to float to have the right amount of bird projecting out of the water on the water. Now that the plastic wood is dry, I can go ahead and sand 
this and remove any roughness. Do a finish sand on the neck joint and make sure I'm satisfied with the, the way it looks. And if not, I'll go back with a little more plastic wood and just make sure it's right. And after we get the head sanded, we'll be ready for sealing the decoy. All right, this decoy is ready for sealing and I'm gonna use deft semi-gloss wood finish. This bird is going to spend most of his days on a mantle, so not in heavy use in uh, water. If I was gonna do that, uh, you can refer to my hunting decoy videos of the Drake and Tin Canvas back. And I used a different sealer that's more designed specifically for water resistance. But I'll give this about five coats and allow it to dry between coats. Deft dries really quickly, which is a nice feature of this uh, lacquer-based finish. This is the final check before I finish the sealing process. I put decoy on my bandsaw. I've got a nice down uh, light source. And just take a look at the decoy from all angles. Make sure I'm happy with the way uh, things are looking. And I am, so we'll keep moving. All right, now that the sealing deft has dried, I've got electrician's tape, and I'm going to put the keel that I prepared centered on the bottom of the decoy. Tape that on. And then you, if you've seen my other videos, this is a repeat, but I'm gonna add a little weight to the bottom of the decoy about what I think we're gonna need and in the position that we need, and then we'll test float it. So I've got two ounces of lead, and since this is a puddle duck, I'm gonna favor the front of the decoy with the weight. We'll see how that does. So I'm centering that on the keel, taping it on a little forward position, and we'll go see how that floats. All right, it's the moment of truth. Let's see how it floats. It's looking pretty good, right on the, the line. And it's good front to back. If you can see that in the video, let me take a quick look. It's right on the money. So I'm really happy with that. Let's just do a quick self-write test. It's gonna self-write no problem. So if, if it were not good, I mean, through experience, I know about where I need the weight. If I would have put it back here and it's too low in the tail, I would just adjust the position until it's right. Thankfully, this uh, decoy is good left to right. If it weren't, you know, if there were heavier wood on one side or for some reason it's listing, I would bury a piece of lead in the side and cover that up to make sure it's floating level. But it's it looks really good, so I'm very happy with that. All right, I'm gonna take my awl, blow the water out of it, and uh, mark the locations of the screws. The weight's covering this up, so I'm gonna undo the weight, and I know the approximate position that's gonna work. Now I'm just going to bury that lead in the keel, and I've shown you how to do that in other videos, so I won't repeat that here. But I'm going to get that weight as low as I can in the keel, and then we'll attach the keel, and we'll be ready to prime the decoy. Just give you a 
a few shots of the primed teal and it's still wet so I'm not going to move it around but that gives you a feel for what it looks like. All right, that's going to be a wrap on carving the Drake Green Wing Teal Decoy. And it's been fun taking this project from beginning, looking at pictures, to creating a pattern together, and then taking it to the various carving steps, step by step, to get it to this point where it's primed and ready to be painted. And I will not be doing a painting how-to video on my YouTube channel for this decoy, but I will do probably a 50 minute how to beginning to end paint scheme for this green wing teal drake and that'll be for sale on my website. Uh, it'll have hand vermiculation in quite a bit of detail. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Uh, I'll announce it when it's ready, but it'll probably be a week or two before I have that done. I've really enjoyed uh, carving this decoy with you. I look forward to future projects together. I hope it's been helpful. That's my goal. So this is Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to all of you.